here. Thank you for joining us this evening. And Dan Zonick will um, have you take over and do the tax classification for us. Tonight, this is a presentation. Uh, we're not voting on it tonight. We no, have, you're voting next week. At the we're voting here. next week. So yeah. this is just it's actual an overview of an um, overview of everything. Okay. And a, a review of the numbers. So we have the finance committee with us as long as well as the assessors. Thank you. Um, and Linda, yeah. our treasurer. Thank you. Sorry about that, Linda. <laughs> I'm so used to you sitting with the finance <laughs> old times. Uh, each year, the select board has to vote whether to have a single tax rate, residential exemption, grant a residential exemption, an open space discount, or a small commercial exemption. Uh, before we start, a few of the, the, the numbers for fiscal 19. Our tax levy is 12137245 The residential value is slightly over $642 million. The residential levy is $7.9 million. The commercial, industrial, and personal value is $339.5 million, and they pay four point, just under $4.2 million of the, the tax levy. If a single rate was adopted for all classes of property, the tax rate would be $12.36. The average value for a single family house in Hadley is $324,900. The values haven't really changed a whole lot this year. Uh, it's just that the, the average value is up about three thousand dollars. That's due to the bigger houses coming in that are the seven, eight, nine hundred thousand dollar homes tend to raise the average up. The average bill is will be four thousand fifteen dollars and seventy six cents. If the maximum shift were adopted, the residential rate would drop to nine dollars and nine cents, and the commercial, industrial, and personal rate would jump to eighteen dollars and fifty five cents. Uh, just the note here splitting the tax rate will not increase revenue in town the only ways to increase revenue or the tax levy is a uh, two and a half percent annual allowed increase any new growth any approved debt exclusion or any general override that might be approved uh, history of the split rate the split rate originated after two and a half passed in 1980 some of the larger cities out east were engaging in disproportionate assessment practices, which 
cost two and a half to start. They would have two properties worth the same amount. One would be assessed for 2,000, the other one's assessed for 8,000. Because one is commercial and one is residential. When two and a half went into effect, they would, uh, they had to raise the 2,000 up to the $8,000 value, just for an example. Mm -hmm. And that tax would go up by a factor of four while the commercial value that was eight they would see their taxes drop. Yeah, that basically, so Boston, I believe it was Boston who petitioned the legislature to pass special legislation allowing them to tax commercial properties at up to 50% more than what they were worth. And there's a, an example here, two and eight, the total tax is 10,000. After two and a half, both properties would pay five grand on it. So the $2,000 elderly couple would now be paying 5,000 a year and a commercial property would see a $3,000 drop. With the split rate, they would only go from two to 2,500 and the commercial would see a slight decrease to 7,500. This is how our levy limit is calculated for this year. Uh, last year's base of 10,576. We had $25 in amended growth from last year. Our 2.5% increase is 264,000. We had 191,000 in new growth for this year for a subtotal of 11,032,000. We have 906,000 in debt exclusions, and there's also 198,000 in water, and well, there, there's no sewer, there are water exclusions that are added on the levy limit page, which gives us our limit of 12,137. So the new growth, is that basically about average of what we've been doing, or is that uh, down, or is it up? That's up somewhat mm -hmm. we've been probably in the 140 150 range i think last year we were in the 160s mm -hmm. so but a lot of that comes from the condos that were built off of east street mm -hmm. that's about 60 grand of that mm -hmm. for this year and then there were some large commercial projects that are partially done or were completed this year mm -hmm. and our levy ceiling if we had the maximum was would be 24 and a half million dollars so basically, our tax rate could double, or values could drop in half, mm -hmm. and our levy ceiling would drop. If there was a huge decline in property values, uh, they'd have to go down by more than 50% before people would see a reduction in their taxes. Uh, this is the makeup of the values for Hadley for this year. And you can see the second one down, the 102 property type, those are the condos that went in. It's roughly $4.9 million for what was there as of July 1, which is gonna pay a little over 60 grand in taxes for this year. And they're not done yet, correct? No, that's only with, there's only 20 units that are actually being taxed mm -hmm. for this year. So we should see a large pro forma. What was the total number for that project? 35. 35. So we'll see a large increase next year as well. And a, a large portion of those 20 were only partially partial done. Yeah. There were only, I would say, seven or eight or nine that were 100% complete. Uh, each year you've got to vote the four options. The selection of a minimum residential factor, which is whether to split the tax rate an open space discount, uh, the granting of a residential exemption and a small commercial exemption. This year, our minimum residential factor is 73.5612%. That means that if you were to split the rate at the max, the, the lowest you could reduce residential taxes is to 73.56% of what they're paying now. <coughs> uh, if you voted a minimum residential factor, factor of one, that would maintain a single tax rate for this year of $12.36. Residential, if you vote the maximum shift of 73.56%, <coughs> residential taxes would go up by 26.4%. It's approximately what they would have gone if 
of last year had you adopted the maximum split? Uh, this is our residential and open space percentage versus commercial, industrial, and personal. If you, this year we're at 65.4% residential and 34.58% commercial, industrial, and personal. If you look at the, the percentages for the years, they're roughly, it's about the same. It, it bounces between 64 and 66%. It depends on whether we get a lot of new houses or a lot of new commercial. This is one of the more important slides. This gives last year's tax bills for five split rate communities and six communities that have a single tax rate. Uh, if you look, the first value, the first column is the community. The second value is what their average value was for last year, the average assessment and what their average single family bill was for last year. So Northampton, the value was approximately $15,000 less than ours. Their bill was 5,230 and Hadley was 3,885 for the average tax bill. It gives the residential rate in the second column. Uh, the commercial rate, well in the third column, the commercial rate is in the fourth column. That's what commercial and industrial pays. The ones that have the same amount, they have a single rate. The fifth column where it says FY18 single rate, that is for Westfield, West Springfield, Hoyle, Chicopee, and Springfield. That's what the tax rate would be in those communities if they had a single tax rate. So Hoyoke and Springfield are at their maximum, they're at their levy ceiling. They can't raise any more taxes other than through new growth. Mm -hmm. Uh, Chicopee is fast approaching that, as is Westfield, and West Springfield's got a little ways to go. But <coughs> Springfield and Holyoke, basically, all what they get is new growth. They can't take 2.5% and they have to do it. Uh, the last column is the average single tax, single family tax bill, if they had a single rate. And they're pretty much organized by value. I believe they're all, well, except for West Springfield. Uh, only East Hampton and Springfield has a lesser bill for residential than Hampton. And East Hampton next year is maybe not 19, but 20 is probably going up about 1,000 a year for the new school schools. And probably about 1,000 for their water, sewer, or stormwater impact. Uh, so only Springfield will have a lesser tax bill than what we have right now. And down on the bottom, uh, the communities that have a split rate tax, a split tax rate, five communities in this survey, their average tax bill is $600 more than what Hadley's is. And the communities with the split rate, uh, with the split rate, they're paying about $276 less than Hadley. Those numbers were more significantly higher last year because we didn't have the, the building overrides factored in at that point. Uh, there's an additional option that you have. If you split the tax rate, you can shift 61, 61A, and 61B land into the open space class. So if you grant it, it would remove it so that they would pay the residential rate. And you could also grant an open space discount uh, a parcel that is not farmed, or that is farmed but not a chapter, would still end up paying the higher commercial rate. So we have the right to take, we have the right to have them pay more on their 61A after they put it in 61A? Uh, no, the, if no. you were to move the chapter land into open space, you would pay the lower tax rate if you split the rate. So instead of, if you go back to, uh, if we did a, the maximum shift, then the rate would go from 1855 to 909 for commercial, and residential would be 909. By shifting it into the open space class, mm -hmm. it would pay the 909 rate okay. instead of the 1855. 
the problem with that is any parcel that's farmed but not big enough to be in chapter or not in chapter would still pay the commercial rates. And how, how, what is that size limit? Uh, any parcel that's got five acres of agricultural land actively devoted can get placed into chapter. Or any multiple parcels that are adjacent to each other that total five acres or more. So when they take land out of 61A, um, they're paying at the tax rate of what it is at that time? Uh, That's a good question. No, if chapter land is taken out, like if somebody came in today and said, I want to take a building lot out, mm -hmm. they would pay this year at this year's tax rate what this year's deferred value was, mm -hmm. last year at last year's rate, and so on going back for five years. They only pay back the amount that they actually saved. For five years? For five years back. Five years. This slide gives an example. Uh, the first one is a non-chapter parcel, which is class code 3930. It's a two and a half acre lot, and it's farmed. Their assessment for this year is 143.2. Their tax bill would be 1769. If you were to shift it 20%, it would be 2125, so they would pay 355 more. The chapter parcel, if it's five acres, their assessment would be 5,500. Their bill would be 67.98. And then if, if it, we were to shift to 20%, it would go to 8,162. So it would only go up 13. Mm -hmm. It's not a big jump. I know I'm saying it's not a lot, but you're only looking at about 2 or $3 an acre for chapter land mm -hmm. if you were to shift it. How much of the non-chapter land do we have? I actually it's not going to show on this parcel because it's got the three, 300 to 393, there's 357 parcels. Okay. There's yeah, probably 140 to 150 of those are, are farm parcels. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a number I could get for you for next week. Uh, but if you were to shift it, reclassify the chapter land as open space instead of $81 their tax would end up being like 45 so it would drop about 20 bucks for the chapter parcel uh, this is basically just a table showing the, the options and what the tax rate would be with a single rate which is the CIP shift of 100 the rate would be 1236 and I just did 5% increments the report that you guys received the actual report, there's an addendum that has 1% increment increases in it, but it wouldn't be legible on the, on the slide if we met any more than 5%. And it gives the various, it goes from 1236 to 909 and 1236 to 1855. Uh, other options, the open space discount, you can grant up a discount of up to 25% on all parcels classified as open space. Several, actually it's 12 years ago, DOR really talked to us, our board progress and said, there's really nothing that we have that should be in open space. It's mostly, uh, a good example would be like Lake Warner. To put in, there's nothing that really is dedicated open space that we have. So they're saying that the partials that um, people own that are budding Mount Warner could be put into 61A? Is that what you're saying? No, open space is, open is space. land that it's in the best interest of the town to be left in an open condition. Okay. But DOR's leaning, or the, the local reps are leaning towards having communities take parcels out of that chapter, out of open, that classification. So we haven't had anything, I think, since 2002 or 2005 mm -hmm. as open space. Uh, residential exemption, any house that's owner-occupied up to a three-family house, you can grant a 35% reduction or exemption of the value of their principal residence. Uh, most of Hadley is owner-occupied. We don't have a whole lot that are rental properties. Uh, I think in the report, it's got, we've got roughly 1,600 houses that we feel would be owner occupied. So when you shift that money, the tax rate, it stays within the, the residential class. It's not really an abatement. 
It's just a shift, so the tax rate would go up. So any house that's assessed at 401, 200 or higher would pay more in taxes if you were to grant an exemption of 35%. Uh, the small commercial exemption. You can grant an exemption of up to 10% of a parcel's value if it meets the two criteria according to the, for the DOR. It's less than 10 annualized employees and the parcel has to have an assessed value of one million or less. There's a lot of part, a lot of businesses that have less than 10, but they're in Hampshire Mall where they might have eight and the, the total assessment is more than one million of the parcel, so it wouldn't count. When you do that, when you do that, uh, that is also made up within the commercial class like the residential exemption. And I've got that number in here. Small commercial. Uh, the commercial tax rate would go from 1236 to 1243 because there's only 49 parcels that meet both criteria of 10 employees or less and uh, an assessed value of a, a million dollars, under a million. So a non eligible parcel that's assessed at 650000 their tax bill would be 8034 with the exemption, it would drop to 7271, and without the exemption, it would, if it doesn't qualify for the exemption with the increased rate, would be 8079. It would go up about 40 bucks for them, and then the parcel that got the exemption, it would drop about 800. Uh, some of the pros of a split rate: you've got lower residential taxes, and you've got increased property value. Because as the taxes go down it makes it more desirable people will pay more for the properties so it ends up actually increasing the values some of the cons of a split tax rate uh, increased commercial industrial and personal property taxes is increased abatement applications increased abatement applications is increased expenses to defend the split rate must be voted every year and uh, that means that any override if an override were voted and funded through a split rate, it could actually get dumped back onto residential, residential if there's a change in makeup of the board. Mm -hmm. uh, cost of community services studies. Uh, these are three studies that were done. One of them's really old, one's from 10 years ago or eight years ago. Uh, it shows the expenditures of what the town pays for every dollar of taxes paid. And the American Farmland Trust, residential uses $1.16 in services for every dollar they pay in taxes. Commercial and industrial uses $0.39, cents, and farmland and open space, or, I'm sorry, $0.29. Farmland and farming and open land uses $0.35. Cents. That seems odd, but farmland and open space pays a lot less in taxes than commercial does. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a, the five-acre field that pays $65, a year in taxes is using, is only, according to this, getting about $20 worth of services for it. Uh, these are a few of the local communities that were used in the Farmland Trust study. Uh, Agawam Deerfield was used two different years in 92 and 2009. Franklin Leverett. Uh, I think those are the only ones that were fairly low. <coughs> the other ones were, were more state, towards the eastern part of the state. Uh, this is the 19 budget as voted at the annual town meeting for police, fire, dispatch, and ambulance. Uh, public safety is just over 2.3 million. Highway is 940,000, which is 3.2, just under 3.3 million. And the top 10 commercial taxpayers paid 1.8, and all commercial, industrial, and personal property taxpayers paid four, will pay 4.2 this year. Uh, so I'm sorry, Dan, your point on that is that effectively those taxes are covering the cost of those services now? Yeah, the, the commercial, I've heard a lot of where people say, well, they use a bulk of the services. They're paying for that plus a whole lot more. Yeah, because businesses basically, I mean, they, they indirectly use schools, 
-hmm. but they don't actually put kids in the school system, right. and that's the biggest draw sure. or expense that we have. Uh, last year, surprisingly, we only had one commercial abatement, and that did not go to the ATB. We had a, it was a down year for real estate abatement filings, too. We only had two. So we didn't really see a lot. But prior to that, we saw a, a semi-sizable increase, none that went as far as the ATB. Uh, the cost of a commercial abatement at the Appellate Tax Board, if we've got a large commercial property in town, and I won't say which ones they are, but you can probably guess, uh, an appraisal on those, Town Council quoted us, said that it would run roughly in the 50 to 60 range per appraisal. Mm -hmm. And you're looking at another 10 to 20 in, in legal fees mm -hmm. for that. Uh, and then there's just the end if you've got any questions. And also the report, <coughs> I believe you were the actual classification error report mm -hmm. is included in there. It's the same exact report as last year. Mm -hmm. All the same properties were used, it's just the numbers have been updated. Mm -hmm. Thank you for a very detailed mm -hmm. report, thank you. How about our assessors? Any um, comments that on how you feel about which way the tax rate should be, or have you, yeah. well, did you worked it, on it? The presentation is sort of skewed for yeah. single rate. Single rate, yeah. Every, everybody's in it together because the unintended consequences of splitting the rate at the end there, he just, Dan just touched on it, but mm -hmm. it could be dramatic as far as appraisals and legalities and drawing it through the mm -hmm. courts. It's so. not worth the aggravation. And the, yeah. It's really such a delicate line that we do have in town between a commercial and a residential. I hate to see if we went with a split tax rate lose some of the businesses that are funding a lot of the town right now, the way it's set up. It's and then there's really, as you pointed out, there's really no protection for the small under five acre parcels. All these small, pretty spots we got, if you split the rate and raise those taxes, that squash is not paying for that. Small parcel anymore, especially this year. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was a wet year for squash. <laughs> and the, the, the big thing to look at too is that the small mom and pop shop is going to get their tax bill if you split it, and they're going to go on oh, oh, those people at town hall, and they're going to pay their bill. The big businesses that you're really trying to get to pay, they're going to get it off to the bottom. And if you go, unfortunately, if you go to the AT. And you're a large commercial, most of the time you're going to get something back. Either a settlement because the cost, if we've got a, a go $90,000 price tag associated with going, and that's if we win, uh, it, a lot of times it's cheaper to, and more cost efficient just to say, okay, we'll give you some money back. And they they know that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dan, the other thing, too, is some, you know, we're not talking about local receipts right now. But when you think about the enjoyment we get from being a business-friendly town, um, you know, in recent years with the advent of changes in the law, we also benefit from meals tax and hotel taxes, which aren't even included in the analysis. Yeah, meals and hotel, the Homewood Suites that's going in, a small portion of that is this year's, is in this year's new growth, but that'll be a huge impact on next year. Where we could be looking at 70 or 80 grand in growth from that project, plus the hotel, 8 percent of whatever revenue was spent there. Mm -hmm. yeah. and we've been pretty effective negotiating with these folks through the years before it ever got anywhere near going to you know mm -hmm. the courts. And uh, I think if we split the rate, even as nice guys as we are, I think uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Might not be some. Yeah, even Easy. the rate might not be what they would pay someplace else, yeah. but it still just wouldn't right. set well. Yeah. That's great. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks. Nice presentation. Thank you. And if you have any questions, uh, you can just email me. Okay. Linda, did you have any questions for them at all? Or Finance Committee, any questions? No. no. Well, well done. done. Well okay. Done. okay. Thanks. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. David has a quarterly report for us for the rest of the combined meetings for us. So. And how do we get this on the screen? <laughs> learn something new every day. <clears throat> so I just wanted to give us an update as to where we were on uh, the first quarter of FY 2019 for general fund and for the free enterprise fund. Uh, the short story is, is that we're doing very well. Um, general fund expenses for the first quarter, uh, you can see that we've spent a little bit more than four and a half million dollars at this point. And that's right on track. If you see the blue line, that's where we expect to be. If you see the black line, we're right on target for that. So there's no surprises in our expenses for July, August, and September. For our revenues, um, two things. We're doing very well when compared to the same time last year in the three categories of revenues. The three categories of revenues happen to be taxes, local receipts, which is all the permits that we do, the, the meals and motel tax, the ex motor vehicle excise tax, all those uh, building permits, dog licenses that's, that's collected there. And then state aid adjusted for the offsets. Uh, so last year at this time for taxes, we were at 25.5% of our target. This year we're at 2732 of targets, so just in that category, we're doing better than the same time we were last year. Same for local receipts, 24.5% uh, in FY18, and 29.1% in 19, state aid almost 25%, and then uh, last year and this year, 34.55%. That's a dumb question. Yeah. State aid, um, is all of that run through the quarterly Cherry sheet? Because I wouldn't think we would be anything off of about 25%. Are there uh, some items that come well, in? Let me sh there's a slide that shows why, why there's a uh, difference. Okay. okay. Well, and it has to do with the late payment from the state last year. Right, right, which right, right. Into this year. Right, alive. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So sense. again, here's your revenues uh, based upon where we were last year, where we expect to be this year, and where we actually are for those three categories. And I have three charts, oops. So the first one is taxes. We're pretty much right on target, a little bit above. The red line shows uh, where we are at actually. So we're doing a little bit better than we had expected. Uh, part of that is driven by one-time uh, tax revenue that uh, showed up in FY19, the first two months of almost $90,000 of rollback taxes from the delayed property. So. For local receipts, uh, again, we're doing better than we had expected. We're doing better than we did last year. We're doing better than we expect to do this year. Uh, and that's just general economic activity and prosperity working for us. There's no outstanding one-time money in there. That's all just recurring revenue at this point. And here's your state aid. Um, and you can see that it's trending above where we expect to be. <coughs> if you look at the green line at the very right-hand side of the top of the, of, the, um, of the chart, you can see the late payment, which gives us that boost in FI-19. So the general, uh, the enterprise funds, there are three enterprise funds. One's the sewer, one's the water, and one's the Hadley Media. And the picture is a little bit more complicated here because we start off the year with expenses. In general, we don't have a lot of money coming in, so it's not unusual to see expenses trending higher than revenues in the first quarter. 
typically that changes when you get into the second quarter and you start getting sewer and water bills in. Uh, and then revenues runs ahead of, uh, of uh, expenditures. This year we had a one-time infusion of about $100,000 for the septage truck. I'll be asking you to, tonight to spend 79 of that so that uh, that uh, results in a chart that looks something like this. And you can see that the top line is the revenue, which is above the expenses. That's unusual, but you have to adjust that by the $100,000 one-time add-in. So if you can imagine that line being $100,000 lower than where it is, that would be a more typical trend line for sewer uh, revenue. Um, and then you can see the expenses. And this is, you know, if you make that mental adjustment of $100,000, it's a very typical line. For water, the situation is a little different. We're doing very well when, where we expect to be, and uh, we're doing uh, slightly almost uh, making our ends meet in the first quarter, but this is typical. So you can see that the revenues are just slightly below at the end of September where the expenses are, and that trend line will continue north and will exceed the expenditures. And again, that makes intuitive sense. You got payroll to pay, you got operations to pay, you don't have a lot of revenues coming in, in the first two months. Refresh my memory. When did we vote to adjust the water and sewer bills? You voted that last year, and that took effect this in the last summer. quarter of this of last year. This summer. So now we're I thought this water. summer we adjusted that. <coughs> yeah. Water and sewer. Yeah. Didn't we adjust increase that this summer? Yeah. The spring anyway. Right. So I'm just wondering if the revenue. The last two payments. Were were the ones that were adjusted, were, adjusted. were the adjusted ones. Yeah. So, so when we did the budget, wouldn't we have budgeted a lower revenue? Because we voted to increase it afterwards. Uh, this is based upon town meeting vote. So what the operation, operational budget. Of that, that I'm just trying to remember. So did we have the rate increase built into the, the annual town meeting budget? I didn't think so. Not in the annual town meeting, but in the uh, adjusted oh. fall town meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's got a memory here. <laughs> so here's Hadley Media. Hadley Media is a different kettle of fish. If you look at the right column, you see that the first three months, first three months of uh, FY18, there was no revenue coming into Hadley Media at all. And then in October, we got an interest payment on the uh, on the reserves of two hundred and seven dollars. And then at the very end of the fiscal year, you got a payment of $69,000. So that is the profile that you will see going forward with Hadley Media. So you get one payment at the end of the year, which is supposed to be for operation expenses. As you see the middle column is 75000 That's a one-time payment for capital that's built into the negotiated agreement. So we will never see that 75000 again in uh, the life of the contract, and the contract goes to 2024. All right. and, but you can see that there are the expenses for FY18 at the very far right. They're doing a lot of capital purchases. You see go from 2,300 to 28,000 to 56,000 and so forth. So they're doing a lot of capital purchases, which is what that money is for. And they would have been using money from the prior payment in order to make those purchases happen. So here you see expenses because you've got to run the programs, you've got to pay payroll, and you've got no money coming in. That can be a scary line, but given the history of how Hadley Media is set up, that, that's to be expected. So that's where we are. Looks good so far. <laughs> Happy about that, right? Um, so have you seen a, a change in how the money coming in every three months has benefited us? Yes, yeah, so in particular motel, meals tax, um, 
this time of year, you're going to start seeing a lot of license renewals. So the select board office will bring in sixty to one hundred thousand dollars in the next six weeks. Um, the water and sewer and that. Um, yeah, so those change. bills have been going out. There's a lot of recurring revenue that's uh, non-recurring revenue that's also happening in water and sewer. Do we have the um, the negotiated um, revenue with the marijuana facility? That is, those numbers are not in here. That's a fifty thousand dollar payment annual payment. Right. All right. And then we also have you now. I'm just thinking of the, there were kind of some big ticket items yeah. in the rest of the revenue. UMass is in there, a $60,000 payment. Yeah. And do we have any concerns at this point about any of that revenue not materializing this calendar or this fiscal year? Or? Well, I had expected the uh, $50,000 per year for the host community agreement for the medical marijuana facility to have happened by now. We're still waiting for it. We have not used any of that money in our budget for this or putting together the budget for any of the fiscal years that we voted at town meeting. Do you know where they're at in the um, construction process? They were waiting to see if we could have a, uh, a marijuana, an adult use marijuana zoning article passed by town meeting. Yeah. But uh, I'm that told, I am told by them that now that their facility in Bernston is complete, they're going to turn their attention to the facility in Hadley. Okay. So, so we should so see that 50 then? I've heard this been before. Two years. Okay. Yes. Two, two anyway. Well, it depends now. I, I believe Joel and somebody else was at the planning board meeting last night um, talking about these bylaws. Uh, they were still on by 10 o'clock, I think, last night. Yeah. They had a late meeting last night in, in connection with these uh, okay. marijuana bylaws. And what got some tricky to things to work for. Yes. <coughs> so it's not, not nothing easy. is clear cut at this right. point still. So it's we don't have the money from the host community agreement because yeah. they haven't built anything yet. And we have not uh, achieved the 3% sales tax on marijuana products yet because they're not selling anything. Mm -hmm. But all of those mechanisms are in place for us. Once it's do start, we should start seeing money. And that'll be new non. That'll be new recurring revenue that we have not budgeted for, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No. No, we went through some of this already in okay. the last meeting, so it's a great question. Is there um, anything that the Finance Committee wanted to bring up this evening? Or? No, I, uh, I appreciated Dan's um, report. Um, I had mixed views, but this is the second time I've seen it. I, 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 um, even though I would like to see overrides and things like that done to give us more, I just feel like there's more cons than there is pros. So I, I am not in favor of the uh, splitting it. More of I, I like to see I like where our town's going. I like to see Route Nine full. <laughs> I wouldn't want to jeopardize that. So I would. You know, at the other towns that he was referring to, you go through a lot of those other towns, and a lot of the small businesses that were on the main highways and the main strips are vacant buildings, and they got big red X's on them. The yeah. whole buildings are uh, vacant. You know, that they're. I, I, I just. Think I can't imagine what Route 9 would look like if we did that. You talk about Westfield and mm -hmm. the, the towns that have the split rate, John? A lot of them that have the split, yeah. split rate. And it's been ongoing for quite a while. It's not. Mm -hmm. they've, they've had a split rate for quite some time.
Differences and now we have received the 25% complete plans for the rear nine widening project. So the log jam is broken. And I'll be bringing this to a select board meeting uh, in the future. Um, this will require a lot of communication and coordination and planning. And I haven't even looked at the plan. I haven't looked at the plans yet, so it's so on the list of things to do on Friday. Um, okay, so the fire substation design is uh, undergoing the, that treatment, and they seem to be on track for submitting the site plan to the planning board in January. Senior Center construction update. We have a uh, public, public hearing for the site plan on November 20th with the planning board. We also received the $75,000 state grant, and we're scheduled to sign that state grant contract on tonight. That's for that project. And we've been working with our chief financial advisor to come up with a revised funding schedule for the three buildings. Uh, and they will be making a presentation uh, at your next meeting. And we'll talk about options. So Turka Park uh, continues to be a struggle. I'm fast uh, to meet with the, the Park and Rec Commission in order to come up with a way to bring this project to a conclusion. Uh, we're hoping to get that done in this month. Um, they have approved three change orders. The fourth change order just came in. And I'm looking at the, uh, the information, and I think we need to have a conversation with Park and Rec. Uh, North Hadley Village Hall's sale update. Uh, bids are going out for the next round of the real estate real tour. And, uh, that should be available to the, at the end of December. Second truck, I'll be asking you to uh, present to award that contract tonight. One bid was received for seventy-nine thousand. The uh, budget budget for that project is one hundred thousand dollars. We're out to bid on cemetery markers, both restoration and uh, assessment. One of the big things that happened just yesterday was the, we finally got approval for our electricity aggregation project from the Department of Public Utilities. It's been a year that they've taken to review our application, so this is exciting. Uh, there's a lot for us to do. It will result, uh, it should result 
and savings on residential electricity bills for people in the town of Hadley. Uh, I'll be bringing uh, Good Energy, who's our, our, uh, our, our client, not our client, our song. Yes, thank you. Uh, <laughs> and for, to explain the process. Preparations are underway for the May 2nd, 2019 annual top meeting. A lot of uh, uh, background work is going and we'll have a discussion about that with the select board coming up. Um, board of Health will be holding a public hearing on their regulations for adult use marijuana on November 27th in the room across the way. Uh, their regulations have to do with adult use marijuana as a food substance. Uh, the Housing Choice Small Town Capital Improvement Grant, I had hoped that uh, we would receive the state contract today. It didn't come in today's mail, so I'll be asking the select board to authorize the chair to sign the contract when it does come in. It should be tomorrow or Friday we can get that project up and running. Vote on that, right? Yes, please. Uh, make a motion that we authorize our chair to sign the contract when it's available. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The housing. Housing grant. Housing grant. Oh. Mm -hmm. you, can, right. you can do that one. Yeah, I can do that one. <laughs> yes. Aye. <laughs> University of Massachusetts has given us a gift of $14,000 for a second uh, mobile radar sign, and uh, the police department has got one on order. That's along with uh, 60000 That's along with the 60000 and the next round that they're going to be giving us will be testing devices for air pack uh, gas. So that will be happening in the next couple of days. Um, we've got the audit coming up, the Community Compact IT grant, uh, we will be awarded $19,350, and I'll be asking you to sign that contract tonight, we'll get that project going as well. Elections, we just had an election yesterday, Hadley vote voter turnout was 70%, 7 0. So well done, everyone. We have an election update for the two. Why can't we have that every election? I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's important. Election update for the two uh, um, capital projects. One is kitchen equipment for Hopkins Academy. And the second is a dump truck for the DPW. That's for debt exclusion. And I'll be asking you to set that date tonight. And then community events choice, I think you want to talk about one in greater depth, but I'll just mention that Hadley's Mother's Club Holiday Fair is November 17th, and the Hartsbrook School Holiday Fair is also November 17th. And then there's the Hadley Festival of Lights, and you've got that information. I do. It's the second annual Hadley Celebration of Lights. It'll be Saturday, November 24th at 5.30 p.m. The event is hosted by the Edward Hopkins Educational Foundation at the Hopkins Academy Gazebo. Free community event. All are welcomed. Join us. Tree lighting, caroling, and merriment. Light refreshments. Event is is rain, snow, or shine. So I think they did have snow on it last year. So. You said it's at 5 o'clock? 5.30. Okay. That's it. That's it. All right. And that's point seven. Almost. Close enough for public comment. Public comment. Anybody here from for public comment tonight? No. Okay. That sounds good too. Um, we could do. Why don't we do the sewer septage truck? All right, so we went out to bid for a used septage truck for the sewer department, and uh, we received one bid, an outfit in Florida that will manufacture the vehicle to our specifications. Uh, we need to negotiate the terms of the payment, but the uh, 
uh, the price is $79,000. We have a budget of $100,000. The surplus will be returned to the sewer impact fees at a future town meeting when that project is completed and the vehicle is delivered. There's some technical things having to do with the, whether we can give them an upfront payment for materials. Uh, we'll work that out with the accountant and we'll negotiate with that. But apart from that technicality, I'm probably not sure to move forward. Could I entertain a motion to accept the bid? I think a motion to accept the bid for the sewer side the truck. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great department. <coughs> Thank you. House Choice Small Town Infrastructure Grant. Uh, that's the vote that you just took. We, okay, uh, we got ninety-five thousand dollars for that project. Okay. Uh, very glad to see it. Warrants AP 1916, AP 1917, AP 1917, AP 1918s, AP 1918, AP 1918s, 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 AP
Okay, motion to approve um, the consent agenda with the exception of the um, items that we pulled out. Second. And any further discussion? Uh, I am going to vote on everything except for you know, I abstain from uh, closing the town hall mm -hmm. because it might you know, in, uh, impact, you. impact the uh, union negotiation team okay. and uh, the senior center design and the senior center form. Okay. You're, you're taking yourself off of that? Uh, yeah, I'm going to abstain from those three. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. <clears throat> and so now I will turn it over to Chief Mason. Thank you. Chief, anybody who's here for your presentation? Are they in the room? Or? Aye. So Are they sure. in the room or in the doorway somewhere? Yeah, we've got room for people like that. Anybody that wants to come in and sit, there's two chairs up front. I just moved out of one. <laughs> Good? Good. Pretty hot. Yeah, no. Not as these <laughs> So um, we'll take one at a time as we usually do. So the first, uh, I'm sure you recognize both of these gentlemen in front of you. Uh, one of them you've seen more recently, Mr. Uh, Ryland Morales. Um, Ryland is a special for us. Uh, just a little bit about him. And again, you've heard this. You heard this fairly recently. Uh, Mr. Barones uh, resides in South Deerfield. Uh, he graduated from Frontier in 2013, and he has, a, has been a special police officer for our department for approximately a year. Uh, he's worked security at Yankee Candle since 2015, and was a reserve officer in Pole Rain for approximately two years. So he came to us with uh, some experience, and we were able to build upon that. Um, Ryland successfully completed our field training program and has worked here regularly in addition to his full-time employment which was a midnight shift um, so i i worked a midnight shift for a long time so i know how, just how difficult that is um, he often worked double shifts for us uh, or he would fill partial patrols before or after work he'd come right after he got out to fill uh, you know partial day shifts for us um, ryland had some uh, some really good competition this time around for the full-time spot to replace um, Sergeant Costa when he left. So uh, that's just kind of a, more of a testament to not only his work ethic, but uh, his interview and the way that he carries himself around the department. Uh, so I would like to recommend Ryland Baronis for the opening for full-time police officer. Motion to accept the recommendation of our police chief. Second. Thank you for moving up in the ranks so quickly, ma'am. Congratulations. All those in favor? Aye. So next, um, I'm sure most of you recognize uh, Mike Romano. Um, Mike has been with our agency since 2013. Uh, he's proven himself as reliable and competent uh, in every level of service that we have to offer here uh, in Hadley. He was hired by Chief Huckowitz as a special police officer. He worked his way up to part-time officer with us and was promoted to full-time in 2015. Uh, Mike worked as the security officer at Vermont Yankee during the time that he was part-time for us, and he also worked the night shift. Um, he still found time to cover shifts for us and help out wherever we needed him. Uh, he was used to the night shift uh, when he was at Vermont Yankee, and when he was promoted to full time, we assumed that he would fall right into that role uh, and be a night shift patrol officer for us, but we soon found a different plan for him. Uh, I can remember one day being in the locker room with him and asking if he'd be interested in being our first ever school resource officer, and I saw that deer in the headlights look, and he had no idea what to say. Uh, I could tell that he was quickly sorting through all the terrifying aspects of being the first Hadley officer to try to become fully involved in the school system uh, and the community since Chief Huckowitz was involved with the D.A.R.E. program years ago. He told
told me that he would think about it. As many of you know, he did take that assignment and he has built a relationship with the schools and the community that I could not have, I thought I could have only have dreamed of. He's put things in place uh, which allow us to be more involved with uh, the young people in Hadley um, more than we ever have before. Uh, with all of these things, he, he has proven to me and to the rest of the supervisory staff that he is up for his next test to join the ranks with us as a supervisor. Uh, Mike is truly devoted to this town and to this agency, and even though he's going to have to train someone new to be a resource officer, uh, I'm certain that he's going to be up to that challenge as well. He has left behind an SRO program that is going to be easy to follow, but his shoes will be hard to fill. So with all of this, I would like to recommend that Mike Romano be promoted to the rank of sergeant. Motion to approve. Second. Yes. All in the favor. Aye. Aye. And I said, I made the first payment. He said, no, I made the payment for me. And I had a copy of the check. 
I have been trying to call him. I haven't been able to. I was out of country because of family situation. I asked my lawyer to get in touch with him and to see what he wants to do with this matter. So if you give me a few weeks, I will make sure that this matter would be. And there is, I don't understand why he's doing this. I really don't understand. Do you have anything in writing from him um, in regards to your arrangement with him on this? No, but I have the check that he cashed. That is the 25%. So you gave him the 25% yes, yes. and of he the cashed the check and he never gave it to us? Is that correct? I don't know. We he received was one payment from him yeah. for, I believe it was about $2,500. Yeah. Is that what the check was for? But the check I made was 1656 So the, the, what we received from the Joe Eckerley in the tap room was the first payment of what was a sewer impact fee agreement. And it was, I'm just very sorry, I think it was 2000. 2,189 or something like that. What is it, 28, 38, 83 though? I apologize, $2,000 even was the first payment that he made. This question is the fairness of it, and I said it has nothing to do with the fairness. It's just the way it is done in Hadley, and I have done it for other businesses. And he yeah, agreed to it. That's the thing. So I agreed to it, and I made called to mine. So you paid the first 25%, and yeah. he was supposed to do the yeah, other the rest. Part. Yeah, he was supposed to make it a You never got this in writing from him? No. <laughs> because he wanted to. So, he had made that arrangement. so now it's going to be his word, your word. Of no, it's not his word. He cashed the check. Well, he did for the first payment. So okay. now so now we're into. Yes, no, it's not your problem. It's not your issue. But yeah, it's well, it's my problem because it's not gotten paid. Give me a few weeks, as I said. And one way or another, whether I have to call have it resolved. Yeah. One way or another, this matter has to be resolved. Okay. Is How does the board way. feel about that? My issue here is that this is so far behind, and we're talking a substantial amount of money here. Um, ultimately, this falls on your shoulders as a building owner. So any dispute between you and your tenant is, is not really our concern. We just need to be paid. Exactly. So whether you pay the town and then go back after your tenant, that's up to you. But we shouldn't have to be waiting even longer sure. for money that's owed to us. If I, uh, because I was not told, I assumed that this arrangement was made, and I believe this arrangement was made, and he signed to it. And so if you would be kind enough to give me three weeks, so I would bring this matter to closure to one way or another. So one way or another, in three weeks, we can have a guarantee yeah. from you that we will be paid. Yes. Yeah. And then at the end of the three-week period, if it's not resolved, we don't have a payment for a course of action. Exactly. I think uh, we vote the occupancy, uh, certificate yes. of occupancy for the entire building. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. No, not just that unit, the entire right. building. Well, well, correct. Because sure. it's this is for the entire building. Right. The, the impact. Just continue yeah. this year until. December 5th. December 5th. So we'll continue it till December 5th. That'll be our first meeting in December. Yeah. Okay. Are, are we asking for it to be paid in full or rock current? Rock current, okay. I would say. It will be paid in full. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm okay. sorry. Well, just as long as we get it resolved, we appreciate you coming in this evening. Thank you. Thank you.
one after the holidays, which would be January 8th. Is particular the people will be more, yeah. more apt to I, I would extend. think they'd be more apt to go to the January one just because of the proximity to the holidays. Depending on the weather. Depending on the weather, right? Both days, probably going to be there. Yeah. The De December one's probably not so much bad weather. It's a horrible time for it. Yeah. Time year for well, the December 8th was the day? 18th. 18th. <coughs> That's if you want to have it on a Tuesday, which is your typical voting time. Mm -hmm. should be, as you say. Yeah. Confused, confused people. Oh, is there any, if we were to delay it to January, John's raising why are more likely to have, well, I don't, I don't know what the weather patterns are anymore, so I'm yeah. not going to say that. <laughs> but, I don't um, know. I, you just have a better chance of the better weather after Christmas time. Mm -hmm. After Christmas, it's just nobody knows. But then we have a chance of a really low weather turnout on the 18th of December, too, because we're getting into all the holidays. Mm -hmm. Did the um, town clerk have an opinion? Just better. Board, so. No, she didn't. Any cost difference between the two? No. It'll be the same. So get it out of the way early. Make a motion. Chair Shaw. Hold the uh, special town meeting, uh, or special town election on uh, December 18th. Yeah, I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Somebody going to talk to Jess? And I think she, Jen's already checked with the schools on the availability also. Reservations have been made. Thank you very much. Yep. Do we have this? Um, Since we're in December, too. Do we have this printed out for their signature? I don't have that, a copy of that. I will be happy to see if I can put a copy yes, of that please. right at this moment. Thank you. Yep, that's it. Okay. Public access cable television proposed federal communications commission rules. Do you hear you're the only one here today? Oh. I don't know if you're waiting for something. I think they were thinking of coming, but it must happen. So I uh, put together a uh, letter to the FCC based upon our experience here in the town of Hadley describing us as an incorporated small town in Western Mass, population of 5,000, uh, but with the cable access uh, uh, station that provides public educational and governmental coverage of uh, the annual budget of about $72,000. And uh, if the proposed rules take effect, the 10-year agreement that we have with Charter Communications, a lot of the provisions in there would not apply anymore. Principally, the annual payment of $69,000 for operating revenue would be drastically reduced or eliminated. Uh, and the um, non-payment related exp uh, uh, benefits to the town, such as build out for the new subdivision that's happening um, and uh, reaching parts of Hadley which are not covered. There's <coughs> Mountain Road and Honeypot Road that don't have cable. Those are supposed to be provided by the Charter Communications. That would go away. Uh, so I've written a letter saying that we're opposed to the propose new rules with the FCC that would severely affect our ability to fund from the cable rates our operational budget as well as take away the non-payment related benefits such as build out to new housing, new streets. Um, and uh, uh, I also made the further point that we would have to shift the expense of PEG broadcasting over to the tax base if we lost that stream of revenue. That letter's not in our material. No, I just wrote it a few minutes ago. <laughs> so I'll make sure I wasn't missing it. Uh, yeah. Okay. 
I think that there is one. That there's something. Yeah. There's so samples. Samples. That, yeah. No, but the, the write up that's in the yellow folder. If you for want us to, to sign tonight. Book. It's only a couple yes. pages long. Uh, Hadley Media did have a chance to look at my letter, and they, they pronounced it fine. Oh, well, I didn't get to see, it. Didn't see but it. But my understanding of the issue is that the FCC is prepared now to allow cable companies to charge back to the town in-kind services, which are things like the build-out cost, would effectively eliminate the payments that they make to the town now. Um, also, they would be able to, or it would also eliminate the right-of-way that the town has for um, the utility poles that the cable companies use. So it's a it's devastating. It's devastating to cable access to all community access um, stations. My guess is that the FCC is going to approve this, that our letter is not going to have the impact we would wish that it to have. Um, but there is an, an alliance of community media stations in Massachusetts, and they provide the information and yeah, I think the sample letters that you referred to um, to contact our, our state legislators and to just make sure that as many people as possible understand what this means to in terms of um, government transparency, the, the ability that we have as Hadley Media to provide the coverage that we do. Um, I recently went to a meeting sponsored by Mass Access, which is the um, statewide association and I mean, I don't, I don't know how many stations were actually presented or um, represented there, but we were the only one that wasn't um, its own 501c3. Like many communities now are funding their, their community um, media by, you know, basically like donations from, um, donations from, the, from the community. So I think I'm just here to, I mean, I'm still learning about all of this myself. I'm pretty new to the whole, um, situation, but I really, um, I think Drew Hutchison has, you know, been doing a really good job bringing up the level of professionalism in the in Hadley Media and making those connections around the region, and we want to make sure that the townspeople understand um, the importance of the community media. Linda, I don't know if you know the answer to this, but um, just out of curiosity, the FCC is proposing the new rules. Can I assume that is because of lobbying coming from the giant cable, cable companies? companies. Yeah. Correct. Because they're they're losing money from subscribers cutting the cable cord. Sure. Right. People have smart TVs now. They watch on the internet, and um, many of our viewers are actually watching on the YouTube channel as well. Right. So. Okay. We need to get hold. We got new new people to contact now after yesterday's election, so. Um, yeah, we finally got a representative again now. We do, yeah. so we'll put Mr. Carey Carry to work. And, mm -hmm. um, so, media motion then. So, motion um, to authorize uh, the signing of a, a letter of, what do you want to call it, or discontent with the proposed FCC regulations? Everybody signs it. Everybody signs it. Can I just say that I haven't seen the letter, obviously, but um, the more details, the better. Because from NPRMs, from at least the aviation sector, they actually do read them and go through them, and uh, <coughs> take a long time in doing so. But the more facts, the better, as far as mm -hmm. impact. Um, how quickly do we need to? Is that a second? Oh yeah. Second. Thank you. Second. And how, so December 14th is the deadline? Or? Yeah, there's a 30 day comment period once the proposal is um, is addressed, I suppose, by the FCC, which is going to happen this week. And then there's 30 days to comment. And you can, there is a way to comment actually online. So any person could submit individual comments as well. I'm just thinking about the point that David just made. I mean, if we have a little bit of time. Would it be better to take a little bit more time on that letter and put as many facts in as possible? That doesn't pay to beat the deadline. Exactly. Is the Selectman Association or anybody doing anything on the state level? This came up. This came to my attention through the Mass Municipal Association. It was something that they talked about at the legislative breakfast a couple of Fridays back in Sunderland. Is it something that states get affected by too? Or do you know? 
anybody with a cable franchise agreement is going to be potentially affected by this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know offhand does every town for the most part have a, an agreement like that? Or what will percentage of the state? Any every any town has cable TV, so. No, I'm saying an agreement with those are all the access. Oh. Does every town they, have they have a contract with their, yeah, they, they're either Comcast or Charter, one or two. Because we were actually involved with Bush on the original. Yeah, so I don't know the number, but any place that has cable television would have had some sort of uh, cable franchise agreement. And I know that out here in the West, many of the hilltowns don't have cable uh, television, therefore they would not have such. So if I had to guess, I'd say two-thirds of the communities in the Commonwealth have a cable franchise agreement or their own cable station. Um, well, and some of the smaller towns are served by bigger towns, like Southampton. All of Southampton's meetings are filmed by East Hampton Media. And so there, the government part of their PEG um, access is provided by another town. Um, my understanding is that Massachusetts has one of the highest percentage of the community media you know, up in the country. That more, of, more towns in Massachusetts do have these, this kind of local media than a lot of other places. Maybe, I'm sure you've considered it already because you know you're dealing with this sort of stuff. But um, op eds to get some attention is this when this came to the board, this was the first I've heard of it. So mm -hmm. well, and Drew, <coughs> Drew Hutchison is working with um, three other um, directors of uh, local media stations, and they're making a PSA, and that will then be um, aired. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they are constrained; they can't do a call to action. So it is about just educating about this issue. <coughs> no, so so motion to approve and second, but um, we can we can add more detail to the letter. His best work on this. <laughs> 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 the on, on the hurry this work. template come through uh, MMA or? Uh, this template came from Christian, who followed up on the MMA okay. presentation. So, all those in favor of the concept of the letter? Aye. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, we have a 7.30 uh, hearing also for a uh, <coughs> application of license for Mountain Farms Mall. WS had the properties for storage tanks, correct? Yep. And I see that our chief and deputy chief are here tonight from the fire department to also, uh, get their approval on this. Are these for the restaurants that are going to be going in yes, there? Yes, this is. This is. Um, <coughs> underground or underground? Underground. Um, my name is Dan Hester. Last time I, I'm from uh, W.S. Development and Mount Farms Mall. Last time I saw you guys was in May to talk about South Maple Street. I brought a friend this time. Okay. Um, just as a quick recap, um, we're currently under construction on our two new buildings out um, at the intersection of Route 9, Russell Street, and South Maple Street. A 15,000 square foot LLB freestanding building. And then a the second building is 10,700 square feet, give or take. And that's a multi tenant building that currently has tenants such as 110 Grill, which is a um, regional restaurant based out of Chelmsford, Massachusetts, Five Guys Burgers and Fries, and Sport Sport Clips, which is a, uh, a haircut studio, and then one vacancy still to date. Um, due to the natural gas moratorium, um, we do need to supplement um, the construction of these buildings with propane tanks. We were able to speak with Berkshire Gas more recently post our submission, which is why we have a revised plan in front of you guys today. Our original submission called for three 2,000 gallon tanks. After some discussions with Berkshire Gas, they were able to find some capacity for us. For uh, so I, some, it is a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> we're able to reduce the amount of uh, tanks to just two tanks, two 2,000 gallon tanks. Um, 
our construction manager, Diane Cook, did meet with uh, the fire chief last week to run through these and provided some comments and feedback to us. I'm happy that if the chief would like to provide some feedback to yeah. us as well here. Um, that's fine. We're just we're we're moving forward. It was just everything was brought to us very late. Um, I just was able to see the revised plan. I did see it on site, but it was supposed to be delivered shortly thereafter for review. So the locations were not conducive to. We weren't comfortable with it at all. The the new location they're putting them now is is much better. Uh, the plumbing inspector and I both had some real concerns about where they were located. Just want to make sure that the communication window is yeah. like we're catching up with stuff on it. Um, Would you be able to show us on the on the plan where the tank locations are? Yep. Yeah. So one is um uh, is right out in front here, uh, which is at the intersection, oh, four-way intersection. Sorry, we could have highlighted these for you. Yeah. And then the second one is right at this new Kirkcut entrance along South Maple Street. So at this point, that's tank one. That's tank two. Right there. Okay. And then. I believe the chief chief had suggested to Diane no mulch beds around these, so we will do gravel um, above these with bollards surrounding them on all four sides of the tank with some plantings and shrubbery to kind of soften that area. Sorry. The only thing I'm requesting, just as we did with Pride, I'm requesting that you keep your original request for you originally were going to have, uh, I believe, three. Yeah. Uh, so 6,000 gallons. I'm yeah. asking you to keep that in case there's an issue so we don't have to do an amendment for the license. Mm -hmm. You still have to apply for a permit through the fire department to store. Okay. So that would cover that section. But basically what that allows for if you eventually decide to have a, a blue rhino put up a exchange mm -hmm. program on your yeah. site. Okay. So we're recommending that you keep the the application as is with the 6,000 gallons. Okay. Even though they might not be putting in that amount, right. they, but in case they do okay. for future use. That's fine. That's fair. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to talk about traffic tonight. Uh, if you would like to talk about no, traffic. Just, <laughs> well, you said you brought the friend, so. Oh, no. He's here. Uh, okay. um, he's uh, an engineer out of our okay. department as well, who's helped put the application together. But, mm -hmm. yeah. but you've already, have you gone through the planning board with this? Yes. Mm -hmm. And we've gone, we haven't gone through. We've gone through the planning board for the site plan approval of everything. We still have we have to go back to the planning board for our some revised changes that we are okay. that we are going to do. All your curb cuts and things are approved by the planning board. Curb cuts were approved by the planning board. The curb cut that you're seeing on the screen still mm -hmm. have or on the plan has to go back to the planning board. We wanted to come in to you guys with propane proposed propane tank locations, mm -hmm. and then we're going to go to the planning board. So we have a couple other some landscape improvements that we're currently working on right now that we want to take all of them in together at the same time. Okay. Are both of the buildings going to be combination? Natural and LP? The standalone LL Bean building is propane. Okay. And then, <coughs> is that right? LL Bean propane. <coughs> Five guys for clips and the vacancy will be gas, okay. natural gas, and then 110 grill will be propane. So did they give you that because of the Burger King? Burger King and uh, Florence, yes. Yeah. Well, they'll say the site, even under construction, looks a heck of a lot better. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank yeah. you for the heavy equipment. We're, uh, we're very excited. We're making really good progress. We're trying to get in and wet rise before it gets too cold. So we're working on the show as fast as possible. Well, this will give water to me tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, and I think we'll be working on a sewer out there yep. at some point. Sewer as well. Yeah. What's your plan done? Um, construction day? We are targeting being done with our work sometime in late summer, so mm -hmm. June, July, August, if it some of it kind of tables into that, yeah. and then we then turn over to the retailers and the restaurant stores who have some more work to do on top of that. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we're all done. With that. So they should be online by this time next year. That would be the goal. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And Oops. nothing else from no, all good there. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you very much. Sure. Appreciate it. <laughs> Mike, I had a question for Mike. Can I have just a, a moment to? We don't have anything on there. <laughs> Yeah,
just a, a quick do we we're gonna anything update on the sub fire station. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, we're working on uh, the design still. So uh, our next meeting is December 4th, yes. I believe. Yep. So the full committee will be December 4th after they do, after they finish up the first designs. Then after that date, I believe we're going to reconciliation. Correct. Yeah. After that, we'll be meeting again in January. Um, everything seems to be going well. We've been really working on some. Uh, alternatives we're not looking like we're we're looking like we're on budget yep. across the board um, we've been uh, working on new technologies to make sure we're saving money and doing what we can to uh, utilize uh, existing equipment that we've had or obtained that's very nice um, as a, as a efficient as you can Correct. Yep. Yep. We're it's uh it's we're going to be radiant heat and floors so that's efficient. Um, and then the insulation is all up to code. Uh, the building is going to be very sturdy up to code. We we're reassured of, of, of that. We didn't want any issues with siding or roofing blowing off. Um, so I, I think you know we've really been taking a look at everything down to what kind of stove we're going to have in the kitchen to support emergency preparedness and everything. I didn't realize how much went into uh, having to put in an, an emergency shower. Because it's not like the one that we use as a bubbler at our fire station. <laughs> 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 so, anyway. Makes a difference. Yeah, it's been going very well. Really good communication back and forth. Good. Um, and then also while you're here, um, it was brought to my attention yesterday. I just wanted to touch base on the uh, library. I know that the senior center has um, tanks, propane, for their. Mm -hmm. uh, not for heat, right? Mm -hmm. It is it, heat. Yeah. So that you're going to go with propane heat tanks. We wanted gas, but yeah. They could only find it near the old burger tanks. Right. So right. my so my other question was because then it was brought. So you've got tanks for your heat and, and kitchen and things that you need that for. The library. So we are uh, almost fully electric. We went with a VRF system and uh, we've done the calculations so that except in the and where there's really no sun, we should be able to power ourselves. And we are planning on having a backup propane tank. Tank, okay. Mm -hmm. So above ground. Above ground. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just wanted to know where where we were with that because I didn't think. I think somebody was questioning me on um, the present library has gas running into that, but because that building is still going to be within use, you wouldn't be able to transfer the uh, other gas to the other building because of that building still being. Um, Are both going to be above ground or both going to be below ground? The senior center is below ground. I haven't heard about the library at this point. So she I just said above. Yeah. That's the plan. That's it's it's not going to be a huge yeah. thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. It's just going to be a backup. Right. So. Okay. So that answered my question. Thank you, Dave. I did hear, just for your point of information, but it has to be a like use for in order to move natural gas from one building to another. I just found that out at our meeting for that. So mm -hmm. if you're opening up a restaurant, that's the only way you can use that existing gas. It had to be the Burger King going to a Five Guys oh, or whatever. Like, um, that's like other use, like equipment. So, so we were wondering if they were ever going to let that happen for those sites. Right. Yeah, because we were wondering about if they could have well, that's why gas on gas. We said it all means it was propane. Yeah. And the restaurants are like use only in some locations. Yeah. Because exactly. it, yeah. it didn't happen in the mall in some of the other locations. Because they had Crown Brown, they had uh, the right. Wild 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 Wild. Wild. Right. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, just one other question. No, I'll ask Phil. Phil. Um, when are you guys going in front of the planning board then for? Yep. We have a timeline. Um, so right now we're showing our, our initial submission to the planning board um, in mid-January and kind of go through the planning board process through uh, mid-February. Mm -hmm. And then the idea is we're advertising for bid uh, late March and hopefully breaking ground mid-May next year. Because we assume that you'll have um, plans to them in advance of that first meeting. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So we're actually they're pretty well pretty well done pretty right now. Pretty buttoned up right now. Yeah. 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 It's pretty simple. Pretty simple. Yeah. Structure, so. Yeah, they look good. Wait, I got one more for you too. <laughs> <laughs> 
Do you have anything for our uh, meeting tomorrow night? Any questions? Shoot. Which meeting tomorrow night? The, the uh, interview. Search committee. Search committee. Search committee. Oh, oh, that's right. Yes, yeah. I owe you that. Yes. Yeah. No, if you don't, that's fine. Just no, it's just the ones I had spoken with you about. Okay. But I supposed to put that in the email. Yeah. So, where do I catch it? Thank you. 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 Who wants to go first, library or senior center? Well, there, well, we're just giving updates, and we don't really have any new updates, do we? Yeah. No, I mean, I think we can talk together. The idea yeah. was to talk about timing of bid, bidding mm -hmm. the two projects. Yeah. Um, since we started the process of reducing the size of the building, uh, we put together what the schedule is going to look like, the reaction to that. And for the senior center project, we're um, anticipating re-advertising for bid mid-January, like right around January 11th, um, to try to, in a fast-paced manner, complete the bidding um, by end of February so we can break ground around March 1st. Um, the idea is this project you know, has some scheduled delays already, um, so the goal is to kind of get going as soon as we can. Um, so that's the idea of that bidding schedule. I have for us tonight a signed easement relocation alignment Thank you. agreement. That's Yay. wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Thank to, you Joyce. Thank, Thank you, you to the Legion um, yeah. members last night. They voted on it. So I do have their signature with a um, witness who wasn't um, part of the uh, executive committee. So we just need to sign it tonight and we can. Thank you. Pass it along. I just need a one copy one. for uh, mm -hmm. for everybody. Right. Give one to the Legion after this so they can file and we should be all set. Yeah. Yeah. Get everything yeah. Over, uh, so yeah. Right. So. Is Jen no rights? Uh, no, the left Linda? Yeah, Linda. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that was my surprise for tonight. <laughs> that was a good That's surprise. A surprise. That's a good surprise. Yeah. Yeah. A good surprise. What's the uh, status on plans from the planning board? What do you think as far as for their sure. advanced review? So we emailed uh, the planning board a couple weeks ago, um, and he, uh, Jim Maximowski, got back and he said he reviewed them. He felt like with the building reduction, square footage reduction, uh, that there shouldn't be an issue being code compliant to the two to one bylaw. Um, and then he indicated that uh, we are to resubmit kind of the full set of site drawings that you would typically submit. Um, so the design team is going to do that, um, as well as the library design team. So it's kind of a full comprehensive package. So ideally, uh, November 20th is the date that we get approval. So when will those plans get there? Um, we'll try to get them a week in advance. I, I want to say that's kind of what they want. So we'll okay. shoot for that doesn't have to be two weeks in advance for those as long as they've gotten yeah. what they've asked for at this point. Right. Um, okay. As soon as we can. So, so he did get back to yesterday? He did. Okay. Yeah, a couple of days ago. Okay. Um, and we also did get a peer review letter. Um, they requested that at the September meeting. Okay. So we sent that off to them. So. Can I just stress earlier is better than understood. I understood. I understand Jim is with what he said, but you've got some other members that are a little bit more. Sure. Popular, so. Yep. <laughs> the other question I had was um, yeah, just trying to anticipate you know, anything that might come up. Uh, I'm just a little bit worried about the fact that uh, our DPW director who signed off on the prior plan isn't um, with us any longer. So any concerns at all about the redesign and questions coming up about snow removal and all of that again, or do you feel like you didn't change the water or the sewer or anything like No. Mm -mm. No, but in terms of snow removal, so at the September meeting, you know, I mentioned that we would look at that because the uh, plan would not brought up. And we looked at it, but unfortunately, to get as much parking area as we could, we couldn't really increase the depth of the north green space and the south green space, which is just couldn't happen. So we are leaning on that letter we got from the you know, past DPW director. Um, as kind of the the town's review of that topic, uh, snow 
removal. Does it make sense again in advance of that meeting to make sure that whether we re-engage Marlowe for <laughs> for a couple of hours yeah. or, or yeah. engage the current leadership of the DPW to make I just wouldn't want that to become a gating item on the 20th. What about sending um, just a request down to uh, Sharon and Billy that just to make sure that they still concur with Marlowe's opinion on the exactly. old site plan? Sure. Not not to necessarily render a new opinion, but just to yep. uh, you know make sure they don't see any issues and that way we're covered. Mm -hmm. it, so they're at DPW, Sharon and Billy. Sharon, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Bill, Kelly, and Sharon. Sharon, two others. Sharon, two others. The gist of, of um, just to, in case anybody here didn't remember the gist of what uh, Marla Warner had said was that that's operational. Right. And um, that they would handle it like they handle all the other operations. Right. Well, he, he thought there's no, no issue whatsoever. Right. I just want to make sure right. that that's, that's right. still there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're just planning, the library's planning on coming back next week when your financial consultant is here to talk about the loan. So this way, so we're just kind of waiting. We're done with our design development phase and we don't know whether or not we should be preparing construction documents to go out to bid or if we're sort of going into a waiting mode. So we just need a little direction from there, uh, especially so we can tell our architect <laughs> and our OPM who could probably find other things to do for 59 weeks rather than nothing so um so we're at that point there's not tons we can do we're gonna we're getting our more finalized cost estimate but after that we're sort of in waiting mode so hopefully we'll get some good information next week mm -hmm. well okay. uh, so we'll be getting the scenarios from our chief and financial advisor on this friday to load into your agenda there's no reason why we couldn't share those documents with you so you can see the full range of financial options that are being discussed next week. Great. So I just want to make sure um, the financial, the, the funding component of this, if we're to alter the schedule, is certainly a critical piece of all of this. But it's not the only piece. Um, and I think that the document, Allison, that you had provided previously had, had some just basic bulleted pros and cons about the project's coming more into alignment from a timing standpoint. But I just want to make sure that we're going to have time. You know, I think the focus next week is clearly going to be on David Eisenthal's presentation with Linda and, and how that would all work. But we're going to want to have sufficient time to talk about swing space and talk about project management, um, the impact on the bidding process, because and speaking with D.A. Sullivan and Colliers, you know, there's a possibility that if the projects go into overlap mode, if I can put it that way, rather than linear mode, then you may wind up with somebody bidding on both projects. So, so there are significant impacts of, to the whatever decision the select board makes, um, and there are significant consequences. <laughs> so. And I know we're going to get tight in December, so I just want to make sure that we'll be able to carve out enough time after next week's meeting to put another meeting on the agenda to have everybody here to vet that before we just go with it. Can we start at 6 on one of our meetings and just have the library and the senior center committee do it? Because the library and the tribe are meeting and just dedicate the hour to it or something? Well, you know, I know Linda already said it really didn't matter when money. I mean, you guys can screw that with guys who don't money. Uh, well, it's a shape of borrowing, which is concerning because you're beginning to push up against that $10 million <coughs> area, which changes some of the complexion of what we need to be talking about. Starting at 6 next week would be a very good idea because you have a lot on your agenda. Yeah. And then I'm, I mean, I'm guess it's going to be a lot to digest, and we're probably going to want to carve out additional time in the December yeah. meeting to make the like kind of the final recommendation too. We'll know more after the 20th, mm -hmm. insofar as 20th is going to be fine, Suzanne. 
Well, it looks like it's Bay, but I mean, we can make some hard and fast kind of planning for, you know. Yeah, because I just think, you know, we need to talk about project management. I mm -hmm. mean, having two multi-million dollar projects happening simultaneously, all the coordination that's involved in that, I mean, that's, that's a lot. And then the swing space, and we'll all just fall into place. <laughs> I have no doubt. I'm not worried about it. I like your confidence. I like it. <laughs> It'll just happen. I mean, we'll just make it happen. Close your eyes and hope for the best. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you've, you've already done somewhat of a plan, you know, so we already have a general idea of what we're going to swing people to. Um, you know, it's just a matter of getting the shovel in the ground and getting going and moving these projects along. And then we can, you know, as things come along and we move people from one building to another and take one building down and move people, you know, move people where they can go. I think we want so. to do it as efficiently and effectively as possible for the taxpayers. So. Well, I think that can still happen without getting anybody's undies in a bundy. Basically. Well, that's why we put planning up front. Yeah. Put the but quality I, control up front. So I, I think there's things already have been scaped off somewhat, so I'm not really too worried about it. I'm very worried about it, so. No. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> um, okay, so are we going to start at 6 then on the 14th? Is that what we're? Is that going to be us? Us or you? Well, I, I, I think in order for us to have any sort of effective conversation, we're going to want, okay. and probably I'm sure the municipal building committee is going to want to be here too, you know, the usual interested parties. But the early focus will be on the, the new buildings and the financing and the scheduling. That will be this after the that meeting that she wants to have at 6 o'clock of everybody ahead of time. So, you know. Yeah, you've got a couple of public hearings at 7.15 and 7.30. They won't take long, but uh, you hate to interrupt a con to sustain conversation in order to talk about something completely different. You've got... Um, I think an hour at least. To the yeah, end. yeah you, you need at least an hour to talk about this. Mm -hmm. So it's fine. It's a quite fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want to be the only one here. You guys are... You, if you, wing, if you want to wing it, if you want to wing it, then 6.30. 6.30? You're really pushing it with 6 o'clock here now. Do you want to be it? Yeah. Are you on 6.30 or 6? Can you make 6? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll try. It. Okay. I'll be my normally fashionably late. <laughs> <laughs> or basically just on time. <laughs> All right, so you want to put out the <laughs> alert to the uh, Municipal Building Committee? Sure. Um, and Allison, maybe you can go to Yes. Well, Linda's going to be here anyway for, oh, okay. for the next leg of it. Yeah, about first six. Yes, notice at six. Yeah. Okay, she's got input on finances. She just won't go home that night. Stay right, stay right, stay. Sleep over. Okay, we can do that. Because we love meeting without you all. <laughs> See, that's another benefit of just getting all this quickly. The sooner you tend to be done with meeting with all of us. <laughs> that's okay. Well, we'll well, well, right? I'm sure you friend. find something. No more meetings. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> Not after 30 years, I don't think so. Um, but I would like to change the date in December if we could. I'd like to move our select board meeting to the 12th instead of the 19th. I have to go to the Legion for their Christmas dinner. I'll be honest. I, uh, like I mentioned to you, I'll be a little bit late that day because I'm going to Boston. But, um, we won't start at 6. That's good. Because I definitely want to make it. This is less than 12. I guess we're doing the fifth and the twelfth. Yeah, would that be okay? Okay, baby. Do yeah, just block them all out and right. see what happens. Is that okay with you, Jen? Sure. And then 
why we're talking about meeting dates, can I ask that we set them for January while we're here? So that way we can. Uh, yeah, I don't have a calendar, but that's okay. I don't think we don't have you, anything. Don't you have like one of those little ones that shows the next one? I do have that. Yeah. I actually wrote out some suggested. Uh, <coughs> So then five Wednesdays in January, the second ninth, sixteenth, twenty third, and thirtieth. No, two two nine sixteen. Yes. January second. Second nine, nine sixteen, twenty third, and thirty. I think the second is out because people still come back from holidays and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we want to do nine okay. and twenty three. Is that look good to you? When are we going? When is the MMA meeting? The MMA is going to be the 18th and 19th. Okay, so that works. So 9 and 23. <coughs> Did you say 16 2 or no? No. Okay, so 9. Because we want, if we're going to go to Boston for that MMA meeting. She was going to see us twice in one week, is what she's saying. <laughs> You don't want to see me twice in one week. <laughs> Let's be truthful. Well, that's right. They haven't heard all of the stories. <laughs> really? February? You're good? You are on television. What? You are on television. I know. People know me out there already. Six and 20? January was set for the rest. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Unless you have any. Yeah. Yeah. Just got a schedule time. Okay. So you, get, you, you got elections coming up too, David. Yeah, I got elections coming up too. You do. Let's <laughs> get a run again. This is the three year one. The question is, is it running hard? <laughs> Are you running two or away? <laughs> <laughs> Haven't decided yet. All right, so we'll see y'all again next week. Next week. Next week at okay. six. Six o'clock. You need me for the contract? You said do on the contracts? Suzanne doesn't have to sign this, right? No, well, or, or, I don't know, but. You're talking about the design and the. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. I'm talking about the other EOVA, 75. Oh, yeah, they, uh, hey. yeah, you don't need to sign that. They can sign it. Okay. Unless you don't, unless you want to sign it. I just want to be clear because I have to report back to them tomorrow. Okay. They approved it. That's the $75,000 for the senior center. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> In early fashion, too. Yeah. Let's see, where else are we? We should start at six more up. Uh, Greenfield Savings Donation. I guess the benches are ready. Oh, Susan, we wanted to do a couple of those, um, or at least one for the senior center. And the Yes. I was going to ask, but I didn't know. On the bench so for the, well, for the library and the yeah, that would senior be center outside. That would be lovely. Thank you for thinking about that. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't know what, we have actually four benches. I think someone had mentioned the town common. Yeah, town hall and town common. Town hall and town common. Right on the front porch over here. The deck is on. The dead zone? It was sure. There's no outlet there. The staircase goes down the front and goes down the south side. There's really nothing on the north side there. Mm -hmm. And I believe there was a bench there at one time. And if Joan the puts the flower, flowers around. Specs from mm -hmm. that, I can use them to look, uh, to give to the designers to see if they want to duplicate For that the, same bench along that walkway. Yeah. Rather mm -hmm. than have hush -hush. Yeah. Exactly. That makes sense. Cool. Is that exactly what it's going to look like? That's what they tell me, huh? But she needs a model on it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Have a good night. You Amazon. too. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, can we send a thank you to Greenfield Savings for the really donation, good. please? Thank you. We have um, school retirements. Yeah. Two. Um, 
This is what for um, offers best wishes and thanks to two long-term school employees who are retiring this month. Mary Schmidt has worked for the schools. She was even there when I was on school committee. Yeah. I've been married for a long time. And the superintendent's office for 35 years. So Mary was their uh, accountant that they had over there. Yeah. Um, she still walks from there to the town hall. She does. Yeah. We. She does. Off the files. And then we also have Michael Duffy, who um, actually grew up here in the town of Hadley and has come back from Connecticut to work here in our IT department over at the school. Uh, and he's been with us for 16.5 years. So we wish them, both of them, uh, a happy retirement. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your service to the town. Hadley Housing Authority has an opening. Um, Hadley Housing Authority sends a notice of vacancy for the elected position of Housing Authority member, the select board will provide at least one week's time for an interested individual to send letters of in, in interest to be appointed to the position. As per the provisions of MGL Chapter 41, Section 11, the select board and the remaining members of the Hadley Housing Authority will then meet jointly to appoint an individual to the vacant position. Tells you where you can find the MGL Chapter 41 uh, law. And we have a letter for a resigned member who is. What's your name? It's circling here. Was that Terry? Or? Uh, you just said a member. Yeah. Didn't say, but no, no, Terry Yushko, wasn't it? Was it? Wasn't she on the board? I know, Terry but I Yushko? She had already or she had already videos. resigned. I'm not sure who it is. Uh, regards to having housing authority. So um, we're asking people if you'd like to serve on the housing, Hadley Housing Authority to send your letter of intent to um, the select board. How often do they meet, David? They, um, they haven't been able to make quorums, so they need to meet a bunch of times. So I think they meet once a month, but I think they've got a back <coughs> over uh, Who's our elected? I think that's Willie. Willie, Willie, Willie Denlinko. Yeah. <coughs> yes. I was trying to I was trying to track him down today. Uh, so I'll we'll arrange a time on the select board agenda when the two boards can get together and we can go through that formality. Mm -hmm. I think they've got somebody to fill the position. Okay. Can we just go get the letters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 And anything else? No. Is there any announcements? Um, you did the I, earlier one. I right? did the early one, and I just had uh, one condolence this evening to the family of Dorothy Terrell, um, who went to school here in Hadley, and uh, we offer her family um, condolences from the select board. And I'd like to, because of uh, November 12th, which was Monday, I would like to thank all of our veterans um, for their service, uh, past and present. Um, it's an honor to have you serve our country. Thank you very much. David, thank you. And motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right, have a good evening. Thanks. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. We won't be back on before then, so everybody have a nice Thanksgiving.